Hi everyone and welcome. We're in my wormery and I've got a couple bins that need to be fed. But a lot of been ha lots been happening in my wormery lately with me launching off a couple new containers which include those little pink ones down there on the bottom as well as a bin outside uh, in the yard which is new to me which is um, a brand new outdoor bin. The other thing that's kind of new to me is what's in those pink bins is um, a new type of worm that I've never used before which are night crawlers. But other than that, it's more or less run-of-the-mill stuff. Um, but I just figured I'd kind of do a quick recap for anyone following along, just so we uh, kind of know where we stand today and where we're headed with stuff. So let me bring you in a little bit closer, just so we can take a peek at how things are coming along. This circular cardboard is really just there as a reminder to me, so that if I uh, ever forget that I've got an outdoor bin, that's there to remind me, hey, don't forget to feed those worms outdoors. These are night crawlers. I believe these are the European nightcrawlers and the African nightcrawlers are back there. And there was food included in the build of the bin. Um, but these two bins over here, dated May 3rd, those are now, I believe, at day 99 or maybe even day 100 as of now. So they're going to get fed today for certain. But these two here, these dated as March 27th and February 26th, these I've been leaving uh, unfed for 18 days now. It's, today's day 18 since they were last fed. And the objective with these bins has been to um, sort of let them starve a little bit so that at some point I might be able to set up a horizontal migration, sort of a final evac horizontal migration after they've had a chance to really break down the materials within the bins. And, um, and maybe after a couple weeks of not eating, they'll be inspired to really gravitate towards the new feeding zone. You can see them back there on the back rim. For whatever reason, there's always worms hanging out in the back corner over there by the wall. So these bins, I'm going to continue to leave them this way. The last time you saw these bins, they were covered with paper. And I've sort of set up what I refer to as the terrarium effect. And the whole idea there is that any any moisture trying to evaporate remains in the bin. and um, and sort of condenses back down onto the top surface, making the top surface a little bit more appealing to the worms in the hopes that they'll kind of hang out there and try to compost down whatever remains. Two bins here, they've been um, they've been set up with a, a treatment of diatomaceous earth in the hopes that I can try to knock out these itsy bitsy little bit bugs that have been crawling around on them. Um, so we'll try to take a closer look to see how things are progressing with that. So let's get to work on this. What's on the menu today is primarily watermelon rinds, lots of them. And in addition to that, I've got another of my staple feeding items, which is the spent coffee. And this here is a new item, which I'm trying for the first time. It's quinoa, some sort of a grain, um, not a very common sort of a thing. A whole bunch of it was prepared for sort of a, a, a trial on a dish and was placed into the refrigerator for a while and kind of got forgotten about. So I've split it in half so we could place one of each of these halves into one of the, each of the bins and we'll see how they go, see if the worms like them. And then um, for bedding, I've got some scrap materials here such as some, uh, some paper towels and hacked up uh, pieces of cardboard and a couple coffee filters. So we'll, uh, we'll use this in addition to maybe some leaves if we need it as bedding. So, all right, let's get feeding. Okay, now, before we just remove this, we're going to see if we can spot any of these tiny insects, which I've been referring to as mites. Uh, but in reality, I don't know exactly what they are. Um, if you look closely, you can certainly see them moving around here, whatever they are. There's kind of a gang of them hanging out here, a few of them over here. So whatever they are, I, uh, I can't really tell. Um, but they're still here, that's obvious. Um, so I'm just going to cover them up for now, just so they don't feel like they've been disturbed. And move the whole kit and caboodle off to the side as is. And um, I, I might just sprinkle a little bit of diatomaceous earth on top of them and see if it helps knock them out because I guess my aim is ultimately to get rid of them, whatever they are. So now if you were with me at the last feeding, you'll uh, maybe remember that I had taken some old compost that I had laying around, stuff that was kind of um, on the musty side, had a weird musty odor to it and had some white kind of a film, sort of a f um, 
kind of a white dusting almost like like maybe there was some mold or something developing on it so I had um, I'd actually taken all of that finished compost out of my bucket that it was being stored in and I went ahead and I dropped it right down into the feeding zone of this and the other bin that we're going to be feeding today so what we did was we opened up a space with um, within this bin to feed in and we fed more or less the way we usually do but the first thing we did was we dropped in a lot of that kind of funky smelling compost and the, the objective of that was to see if you know if there was any mold in it then the assumption was that the worms would probably uh, enjoy eating it and hopefully revive that compost so that it's not funky in odor so it doesn't have that weird funky smell to it anymore and hopefully becomes um, kind of nice clean compost in the end just like the rest of what's in here uh, I guess the, the other way that this can go is that it could end up spreading and infecting <laughs> the rest of the batch so there was a little bit of a risk involved in, in doing so but uh, it was an idea that one of the viewers had suggested and I thought it was a, a good idea so I gave it a go and so far I don't smell anything as far as that musty weird odor that uh, had me concerned in in the first place which is cool and um, you know I'm guessing at this point that the problem has been solved that musty material was simply placed back into the bin here and the worms probably enjoyed eating whatever that was that kind of moldy substance that was making a little bit of a stinky smell and um, as far as I can tell at least my nose cannot tell uh, you know of any remaining traces of that at this point so that's pretty cool I'm very happy to report back that that's the outcome of that trial and that uh, that only took what 10 days 10 days ago was the last time we fed this bin which is when I did that so um, yeah I'm glad that that was the outcome of having tried that because because um, that at least prevents me from having to trash that compost. I'm just removing a lot of this big chunk, big chunks of food items that are slow composting materials uh, such as corn cobs and mango seeds. Given enough time corn cob will end up getting chewed up quite nicely and then just flakes apart in your hands in the end um, leaving only little tiny kernels of edible food for them. Uh, even though if in the beginning you start seeing that it seems like there's very little or no progress occurring with your corn cobs if you're feeding corn cobs if you're patient it'll all go away in time I've heard a lot of people talk about placing the corn cobs in and then eventually removing them if you're patient and you leave enough time um, they'll get eaten up just like everything else alright so we're just gonna start making a little bit of space in here for these little guys get a little bit more food added maybe not even a little bit maybe a lot because I've got a fair supply of watermelon rinds and you know they love watermelon rinds so I don't, I don't think it's gonna last very long I think once we put that stuff in here they're just gonna go nuts for it and gobble it right up one two three I just figured I'd try to move a good number of them off to the side and make Make a nice big pit here in the middle to add food into. Very nice. Yeah, so we'll just take some of this cardboard that I had hacked up for this purpose. And we'll put that down as sort of a bedding material for them to cruise around on um, cruise around in. Just to a little bit of tomato scraps that they can chew on as well. Let's start with one of these hunks of quinoa. Oops, <laughs> fall apart. So let's uh, let's retrieve one of them for the other bin. Put it aside. So it's starting to uh, it's starting to smell like quinoa. When it was all frozen, there was really no smell to it whatsoever. So we'll see how that goes. I um. I also figured maybe use a piece of paper to cover it up 
So if the worms start cruising on it and they feel the cold, they don't have to be directly exposed to the ice. Like I usually do, I'm just going to take the old food scraps that have been here for a while and return them to the feeding zone at the bottom. And then we'll add the new layer of food on top. Most of the food items returned back down into the middle here. Now what, oh yeah, we had some other bedding materials that we extracted earlier. This newspaper here, we'll just get that back down into the pit as well. So let's go ahead and add some of this watermelon rind. There's a lot of it here. And I'm not worried about feeding abundantly because I think they'll do away with it pretty fast. how much of it I can jam in here it's about half it's about half of what I came down here with to feed them with so I got a feeling we're gonna cover this up but within a couple days this is just gonna collapse and they're gonna gobble that up so let's throw a little bit of coffee grinds on top that's pretty good when it gets a little moldy like that they love the mold on the coffee grinds like so we talked about using one of these coffee filters, so why don't we just use that here too? Sort of a little layer in between the uh, the worms and the uh, the frozen food right beneath them. And here's another piece of that paper towel. So I think that'll be a pretty nice, generous feeding for them today. Let's go ahead and start covering up what we have here. I always like to sort of scoop down onto the edges over here since like right now we're feeding in the middle I like to check the uh, outer edges as well to see how things are looking during a feeding also gives me a chance to sort of aerate the material a little bit which I think helps too Alrighty. let's see what else we got going on over here on the edge the funny thing is you would expect that the majority of the worms in a bin that gets fed down the middle to have um, have the population population sort of concentrated down the middle, but it just seems like there's worms everywhere in this bin. Maybe it's because there's just so many of them. I don't know why, but um, they're not really necessarily concentrated where the food is because you look anywhere else and there's pretty much just as many of them everywhere. This piece of newspaper. Let's see if we can get that back down in there into the feeding zone. All right, that was a pretty nice size feeding because it um, does seem like it bought the whole level of the container up a, a tad. See here and there, I got nice concentrations of worms. I guess trying to work down this banana stem here, if that's what this is, it seems like it looks good. So now we're going to get that piece of paper back here that we had removed from the top as the cover. Let's see if we can get a closer look at what these little creepy crawlies are hanging around the top there they are moving around again it seems by me moving them around they um they did get kind of commingled with some of this little bit of leftover diatomaceous earth that's still in here this, this stuff was applied a while ago but it does seem like it's um, distressing them a little bit they don't seem to be too happy about being exposed to that stuff so I think that that stuff definitely um, plays a part in um, kind of either repelling them or disrupting them or agitating them. So um, yeah, why don't I see if I can scrape some of this leftover diatomaceous off, earth off off this piece of cardboard and onto those little buggers, and maybe that'll help sort of wipe out the numbers to a certain point. And the stuff has kind of gotten all over them. There's really no escape at that point. They're goners, I think. So hopefully that means that these um, these buggers have kind of met their maker. Um, I'm trying to remember now. There was some over here as well. I'm just going to see if I can knock them off and let them join the party. So I've, I've been referring to these as mites. But a lot of people have been saying, yeah, no, those are not mites. Mites are much, much smaller. 
and, um, and that these are something else. But they're so small, I cannot tell what they are. I just cannot see um, what the heck they are. They're just so tiny. Okay, so here's the uh, the bin. And uh, I haven't even looked. I'm assuming we're going to have a similar little... Um, colony of these little guys cruising around over here that we can try to take a peek at. So let's see what we can see. Can't say I see any. So maybe the efforts to get rid of them are working, at least in this bin. Alright, so let's get this bin ready for a nice uh, generous feeding as well. So we'll get rid of these couple ambitious little seeds that keep wanting to try to sprout out and we'll uh, excavate a nice feeding zone for these new food items so these two bins have been ma managed in a very similar fashion um, right down to it also getting some of those funky bits of compost from um, from that musty pail that I had so hopefully we have similar results happening in this bin as we saw in the last one is that the um the musty odor is gone and i'm sensing that that's the case i don't smell any musty odors move all these large slow composting food items off to the side make some space let's build up a little bit of a crevice to drop things into This was like the uh, the the main end of the bunch where there was a couple banana bananas hanging off of it. And you can see how they've shredded right through each of these banana stems. They really do a great job on that. More corn. I guess, oops. Oh boy. <laughs> corn confetti and compost confetti everywhere. All right, but yeah, you can see. I mean, normally you can't do that with a corn cob. You can't just stick your finger through it. So they're they're making their way through this stuff quite nicely. Okay. Everything else down here just feels like worms and loose compost. A couple scraps of paper here and there. But in this case, it seems like maybe they've actually burned through that paper as food, which is cool. They're totally welcome to do just that. Because the paper is not only there as bedding for them, but it's also a form of food for them. So let's go get some of the things we're adding today. Okay, so like we did previously, we're just going to take some of these cardboard scraps I had laying around and uh, lay them down as bedding on the bottom. And like we did before, we're going to pop in this big hunk of cooked quinoa. I'm hoping that they're going to enjoy that and consume it readily. So like we did before, we're just going to put a little covering on top of that. So that if any worms are placed right on top of it, they don't have to be exposed directly to the ice. Let's see if we can fit in the rest of this watermelon rind. I think somehow we'll make it fit. So maybe some more paper and oh yeah before we forget let's not forget the coffee grinds Ooh, looks like a couple worms kind of got ejected over here I guess when I took that corn cob and sort of splattered it <laughs> let's see if I could retrieve these little guys before they end up dying drying and dying which we don't want to have happen even if it's just three worms Okay, so I think we're almost at the end here. Just trying to see if there's any other little scraps of um, bedding, paper, might have been pulled out from below. Let's go ahead and cover up like we usually do. We'll just try to, at the same time, 
take a peek at how things are looking on the outer edges of the bin. The material seems nice. The, con the consistency and the moisture level of it is just right, as far as I can tell. Stuff's been a little bit damp lately because of the high humidity, and that's part of the reason I've been um, going with a much thinner covering to let some of the moisture sort of flash off and evaporate. So I, I like the way this material's coming along. Its consistency seems just about right, you know. Uh, crumbly. I mean, yeah, it's filled with worms, obviously, but um, I think the the dryness level. It might be a little bit more damp than you would want if you were harvesting today. Um, but I'm going to continue to leave it sort of more or less uncovered with just that one thin piece of newspaper on top and, um, and just allow for more of the moisture to sort of wick up through that newspaper and evaporate away. So just scoop low again here like we've been doing and sort of distribute stuff around a bit if possible. Give a little bit of aeration to everything and give us a chance to peek at how things are progressing everywhere. So, yep, like we've been seeing in the other bins, or in the other bin, there's just worms all over the place. They're not necessarily focused on the middle of the bin where the food and the feedings have been occurring. They're just scattered all over the place everywhere throughout the bin. And I guess that's probably just um, an indication that there's ample food for them throughout the bin to, uh, to let them go wherever they want to go. So this was a pretty good size feeding, a nice hearty feeding, but it's one that I believe is going to get consumed quite quickly just because it's, uh, it's a type of food that they really dig. So, um, and the, whether the quinoa is going to go or not, I don't really know. I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, at first I was thinking maybe just doing a little test run with it, and then I figured we'll just take the whole bunch of it and split it in half, and we'll see how it goes. If they like it, then I don't think there's any more in the house, so that's that, whatever. I think we're more or less done here. So, let's get everything covered up again here. Alright, so that's it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, then please remember to give me a, a thumbs up, you know? If you like the video, that's always a great indication, just by clicking that thumbs up and showing that you liked it. And um, if you want to see more stuff like this, then consider signing up to be a subscriber to the channel. That's always really appreciated as well. So thanks again for watching, and um, I appreciate your company. Have a great day. Bye now, everyone.